Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back. This is going to be another of those that I call controversial videos. It's not gonna be so controversial. It's just I do have some opinions that people would disagree. Usually veterans would disagree with. But uh, let's just get right to it. And today's topic is do you need a formal education to be a game artist or to be in BFX? Now the TLDR for the whole thing, do you need a formal education as in, are you going to need a diploma? Will they give you a job if you have a diploma or not? You don't need a diploma. You don't need a degree to be in this industry. From my years of working and the posts that I keep seeing every now and then in art station and whatnot, I have never seen one single job description that says, you need a degree, not one. Now, this is for game artists. If you are a game programmer, I often see that they do require some computer and science uh, degree or data analysis or something like that for certain parts of programming in, in the game or even some tech art. They say, hey, if you have a computer science degree, it's even better, like a plus. But for game artists, and most VFX jobs, you do not need a diploma. Now, this subject is a little bit more complicated than whether you should go to school or not for uh, game art. And it comes right down to what's your situation? Okay, just to talk a bit about my experience, I had another career before I came into game art. I used to be a medical doctor, actually graduated from university uh, as an MD. Total different subject, we'll talk about it later. But when I switched to game art, I had no idea how to be a game artist. I had no idea how to do it professionally. I've only been doing it as a hobby. Like I've, I've been using 3D programs before and been doing some modeling and stuff, but only as a hobby, like to have fun. I've never, at that time, I never thought of doing it professionally and I had no idea how to do it professionally. So that's why I joined the college I actually joined a community college that had a game art degree to see how things were and how can I become a professional game artist. That was my reason to do so. The other reason was that at the time uh, I did want some schooling just to help with my writing and stuff in, in English because as you all know, English is not my first language. I actually come from Venezuela. And uh, I can also give you my perspective as a teacher because I taught in college. I taught game art in college as well later on in my career, uh, but we'll leave that for now. So if you're in a situation where you are having troubles trying to jump in, you've always done this as a hobby since high school or since if you have another degree like myself, then probably, yeah, you should go to school to help you out with that. However, and there's a big however, you do not need to go to expensive schools. I know there are some like high-end universities and whatnot that charge a lot of money for a game design degree and they have all these flashy portfolios and stuff. You do not need to go to those schools. Most likely, you don't even need to go to a four-year school to achieve what I achieved. You, you only need an associate's degree. Like I said, the degree doesn't matter. If you just need some guidance, then go to a community college, go to your local college. Don't go to a big university to do this. And the most important thing that you can take from this video, if you're studying in the United States, is do not take out a student loan for this career. Do not take out a student loan to be a game artist, to be a game designer, to be a game anything. Do not take out a student loan because game art degrees in big universities are really expensive. You're going to get yourself into a lot of debt and nine times out of 10, you're not going to be paid initially what you need to cover that loan. So you're going to have a miserable time while you're doing your career, once you manage to find a job, once you graduate and all that. So if you're going to do this, be smart about it, uh, either work for the money and then go to school. Uh, if you have a career like I did and you have people that help me, in my case, my dad helped me with that then yeah, go for it. But if you need to go to student loan thing, just don't do it. Just keep working at it. 
I'm going to do other videos about advice on how to do these things professionally and all that. Now, as an instructor in college, let me tell you some of the things that I saw from students. There were many students uh, in my class that were there, that wanted to be a game artist, that knew how to do it from their home. They were very good at watching tutorials and being self-taught and all that. Uh, some of them just told me, hey, my parents told me that I either go to college or I have to get out of the house. So that might be your case. That may be one reason why you need to go to school. Again, everyone's case is different. The only case that I would say that you maybe have to go to school to a four year school, meaning getting a bachelor's degree is if you want a visa. So if you're an immigrant like myself, I, I didn't do uh, the visa that way. My dad is an American citizen, so I got my green card that way. If you want to emigrate to the US and you're looking for an H1, an H1 is a work visa, then you need a bachelor's degree of some sorts. So you must go to college if that is the case. If you are in a country that it's not one of the main countries for video game development or for VFX like the UK, the United States, uh, some parts of Asia and some parts of uh, Europe, Eastern Europe. If you're not in those specific countries and you need a work visa, I do not know about work visas outside of the US because I've only been to the US. But as far as I know, you do need to have a bachelor's degree in those cases. So if you're abroad, that may be your reason as well. Just one thing about being an instructor for Game Mart is this this one was funny and I used to get a lot of students that I, I, I used to ask them like, why you're here? Why did you come here to study Game Mart? And one of the responses was I I like video games and I don't know what else to study. If you like video games, I love video games. But if that's all you like, you don't like making them, you don't like uh, creating the stuff that's in them, do not, do not go to school for that. If you like video games, just keep playing video games, maybe get good at it and become a streamer. And, and I don't know, people become millionaires that way somehow. But do not go to school if you just like video games and you are not into making video games because it's two very different things. A lot of people think that making video games is, it's like playing them, it's really not. So that's one of the reasons you should not go to school for game art. Let's read something very interesting that I saw the other day here on Twitter. It's something that Joe Hobbs posted. I followed him. He, he has very good advice for students. So I recommend if you're on Twitter, to follow him. Uh, he's very uh, insightful into what you need to get into the industry, even though we don't agree most of the time. But uh, he does have a very good insight of it. And there are some things here that I, I wanted to address in this video. I even asked for permission <laughs> to do it. This is something for students. And let's get to first thing is he mentions um, courses will pile on when you're in school. He's talking about being in school, like requiring animated characters, for example. But what if you don't have an animator? Will you still pass it if you don't do that? Unless you want to be an animator, this is a waste of your time. Here's the thing. Universities are, uh, well, not universities, but colleges that do this. They, there is no way that they can specialize. Like That's like asking a doctor to be a internal medicine doctor without going through medical school first. So when I'm sorry that I have to do this. It's a weird example, but since I went to medical school, when you go to medical school, you see everything. You just don't see the specialty that you want to be. What I mean is there is no way that universities can specialize in, in okay, you want to be a modeler. Okay, here is a degree plan for you just to be a modeler. You want to be an animator. Okay, here is a degree for you just to be an animator. It's very hard to divide students like that. And, and I know it's... It doesn't make much sense, but once you are in the once you're the person teaching and you see how universities actually work, you see that that that's something that you cannot do. Like you cannot have a student specialize in something. And the other thing is you want students to be to be facing everything because some of them don't even know what they like when they get to school. So once they get to school, 
a kid might say, hey, I want to be a modeler, but then they go into an animation class and they love animation or vice versa. So that's why you want to expose the students to all branches of what means to be a game artist, because, hey, what if they want to try this and, and they, they didn't even know about it? It happens. Uh, it happens because I've seen it. Uh, university wants you to create projects they can show off and promote. Uh, some universities might do that, unfortunately. Uh, after you graduate, the school is done with you. Yeah, that's true. Don't be pressured to help or promote your school. I completely agree on this one. You are the one who will leave this with student debt. Yeah, I also agree with this one. Do not. Do not ask for student loans to be a game artist. Do not. If you need to ask for student loans, then just study game art on your own. Go into courses. There are plenty of courses that are much cheaper than going to school because you don't need a diploma. Do not get in debt to be a game artist. Uh, so how do you plan your final project like this? Look at the skills you have in your group. Do not plan to build something you don't have expertise to build. I also agree with this. In our project development class, which was the final class before you graduated, we divided the students into their their best skills. We actually mix programmers and game artists and asked them to make a game. Sometimes that was amazing. Sometimes it didn't work too well. But for the most part, what we did is each student was in, in their core skills. So we wouldn't ask somebody that wasn't good at animating. We wouldn't ask them to be an animator. Uh, we just ask what were their strengths and what they want to do, and we would put them in that position where they could show off their actual skills. Forcing students to include elements they severely struggle with only increases their level of stress. I agree, but here's the thing. Um, when you go to college, you go to college to be challenged. It's, it's weird. As an instructor, to give a student something that they're... It's easy for them to do. I don't think as an instructor, I'm, I was doing my job. If I would give them the easier task, I, I like students to be challenged, not to be stressed, of course, that's ridiculous, but I like them to be challenged and to try new things so they get better. So to students, please don't be forced to feel like you have to get to the top mark. Your grade doesn't matter. That is completely true. Your portfolio does. So here's the thing with this. Your grade doesn't matter, but your portfolio does. I'm going to say one thing goes in hand with the other, because when it comes to students, students that had a bad grade always, always had an awful portfolio. Now, students that had a, a amazing grades, not always had great portfolios, but for the most part, they had good portfolios. I never met a student with terrible grades that had a good portfolio. Any, anyone that's teaching in school can, can attest to that because usually if they have bad grades means they're not into this, they, they don't like it, they're just doing it for other reasons. So um, they are not going to have good portfolios either ways. So uh, higher lead couldn't care less about your grade. Yeah, that I agree with you. Don't sacrifice your mental health. And I mean, I, I would agree in that because school sometimes give you other classes that have nothing to do with game art. So yeah, and those you just, just can pass the class. But when it comes to my experience as an instructor in college, like I said, I never saw somebody had low grades and had a great portfolio that it, it would be a very rare case, to be honest. To teachers stop demanding your students do everything. You're not helping them. You're putting them in unnecessary pressure. I don't know what this means. Like I said, if, if we are in the project development class, which was the later class, we usually would get the students into what they were good at, what, what their best skill was at that time. Uh, I don't know if this means that if a student is a modeler, they can texture or, or what. I, I don't, I'm not sure what he meant by this, so let's just leave it. The only purpose to care about academic grades are other academic, yeah, don't, what I said, your, your grade doesn't matter. However, I've never seen anyone that has a bad grade that also has a good portfolio. No students, no student studies game development who doesn't want to get a job making games or make their own. So let them find the thing they love doing and let them flourish. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I think we both agree in this, being that the way that we conducted our classes was geared to this. However, like I said, we do, we did, because I'm, I'm no longer teaching there. Um, we did ask our students to go through animation class, to go through other types of classes, because that's just going to open, um, that's just going to open doors for the students. Let me finish this Twitter thread and, and we'll, we'll talk about this, this little part. I'm sorry. So the last one says, I do want to add that I know there are good teachers out there who try their best despite academia having to deal with and good courses too. But in general, what I've written is what I found to be true. And again, we agree for the most part. However, in this, this part, this, this is the controversial part of the video and why this is called controversial opinion. It, the reason why I have the job that I have today is because I went to school that put me through absolutely everything. I went through animation, I went through After Effects, I went through 3D modeling. We went through several things. Um, I may not be a specialist, like awesome character artist, or a specialist in environment design. To be fair, I, I don't know. I think I would call myself a generalist. Where I work at, I have to do a lot of things. It's a small company, so I have to do things from modeling to animations, sometimes videos. I have to do a lot of compositions with Photoshop. So yeah, I think it's important to give students a chance to experience everything because people who go into degrees want jobs. That's, that's my take. I mean, there may be one or two that just there because their parents are forcing them, but which does happen by the way, I've seen some students that way, but the issue is game development and game art especially is a very saturated industry. I know some people say, oh, it's not a saturated industry. Juniors are not what they used to be and it's really hard to find a junior artist. No, it's, it, first of all, I rarely see a junior position. And second of all, there's just so much talent. There are so many people out there versus the amount of positions because, so imagine this, in the classes that I had, there were about, let's say not a big number, 20 something students. So, so let's say 25 students per class because the college was really small. Okay, so imagine there is um, 10 colleges around the US. So 25 students, 10 colleges, that's 250 students graduating each year. You think the industry is adding even 250 jobs each year? And I'm only talking about the US. I'm not even talking about the rest of the world because I know there's a lot of people in Europe. There's a lot of people in Latin America. There's a lot of people in Asia that do, do game art and do it really well. How do you compete? And, and this is what I mean uh, with controversial. If you are, if, if this is your passion, like if your passion is to be a character artist and I'm not going to be happy until I'm a character artist a, at a AAA, fine. Then you grind your way to uh, that position and that's, that's a good thing. But for someone in my shoes, I needed a job. I just needed to make money doing what I love. And in this case, doing what I love is doing 3D modeling. I like doing animations. Have you seen on my channel? We're doing uh, 3D animation stuff in there with Unreal. I love working with Unreal. I don't know. I, I just like what I do and I'm just happy to do it for a living. Like it's, it's been a very long while since I worked on video games, uh, other than working in an actual game engine, but it's been a long while and I'm still happy. I still love what I do. And the fact that I have a job is because I was exposed to various different parts of the industry. Like I, I said, that is your choice you want to specialize from the get-go or not. However, if what you want is a job, you may need to branch out. And I think this is one of the things that schools are doing right, is exposing students to the different parts of uh, being a game artist and not just modeling, not just animation, not just texturing. Because in the end, the job of the school is to 
help you get employed. The school is not going to get you employed. If you go to school thinking that they're going to guarantee that you get employment, don't do it. Don't go to the school. Do not listen to schools that say, we guarantee that you're going to get employment. If you go to our school, blah, 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 we guarantee that you're going to have a great portfolio. If you go to our school, do not do it because of those reasons. And do not go to those schools because that's not good. Uh, and the only the other thing that I must mention here that I've seen a lot is there are schools advertising a specific amount that you're going to make as a junior artist. Nine times out of 10, that's false. Nine times out of 10, junior artists make very little. I know there's going to be somebody in the comment section that say, oh, I'm a junior artist and make six figures. Well, good for you. But junior artists usually make very little money unless you're a junior artist from I don't know, my home country, Venezuela, and you're earning um, $5 a week. That's a lot of money in Venezuela, by the way. In that case, yeah, that is a ton of money for my home country. But if you're in the US, you're not going to get a huge salary as a junior artist. So, and, and more often than not, those game companies are located in places that are really expensive. So, do not do this for the money. If you are doing game art for the money, then you are in the wrong career because you're not going to make money here. I make an awesome living doing what I do, but that's because I went into game art to do what I love. I didn't go into game art to make money. If I wanted to make money, I would still be a doctor. There you go. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I know I got a wee bit emotional in there. It's just because... I used to be a student, I was an instructor, and now I'm here. So I think I, I consider myself a successful artist because I'm able to make a living being an artist, I'm able to make a good living being an artist. I don't have to worry about my bills. I have the car of my dreams, I have the house of my dreams. Uh, my wife stays at home and I can afford it. So yeah, I think I'm a successful artist and I have a YouTube channel where I can help people. So yeah, sorry if you saw me getting a little bit emotional there, but it wasn't long ago that I was in that position of should I go to school? What do I need to get a job? And it's really hard. I know it's really hard. So hopefully this video helps out somebody out there. Thank you so much for subscribing. Leave a like if you like this video. If you didn't leave a dislike, that's fine too. I love reading everyone's comments. Actually, the past controversial video actually had uh, more comments than usual. So that was really fun to read. I usually reply to most of my comments. So please uh, just let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And um, I'll see you in the next one.